Uh, excuse my little nightwear because I'm about to go to bed. But this is part one of who the f did I let live with me. So to set the stage, it was 2023, January to be exact. I just started working at Wells Fargo. I would come into class. I would sit in the back because one of the people that I went to school with was back there and everybody else was in the classroom. I ain't know none of them. This was about a, well, we were in class for like four to eight weeks. I don't remember. We were in class for a little while, but I would go to lunch. I would be to myself. I even had people that would ask me to sit with them at lunch and I would be like, I'm good. Somehow me and this other woman started to talk. I used to hear her while we were on our break talk on the phone and I loved how positive she was. And somehow we stumbled on a conversation, push comes to shove, she ends up asking me if I could take her home sometimes because her her and her husband car went out. So she paid me a hundred dollars one week and I had to take three toes to get to this woman. She lived about 30 minutes from me and then we still had like another 20 minutes to get to work. So it was really out of my way because work for me was about 15 minutes away. It was not that far at the max 20 minutes with traffic. So I was being nice, you know, being that she paid me and she was in need. And, you know, I love to see women get into their bags. So I won't cut off nobody bag. Um, they lived in really nice apartments on the other side of the water. If you're from RVA, you know what I mean by the other side of the water. But me and her started having very intimate conversations. And she was telling me how her husband had been on drugs. He had recently relapsed because of a friend's death. She just was giving me all the tea, honey. I ended up stopped working at Wells Fargo Call Center and I went to my job that I'm at currently now. But me and her stayed connected. She had left Wells Fargo before I did. And I know like over the time she was telling me that she started working at Carmex Call, uh, call Center. Um, and by the way, just to mention, she isn't from Virginia. She's from Atlanta. So one day when I was still um, dealing with my ex, um, I had his daughter. So me and her decided to link up because her husband's son and um, baby mama came to stay with them. And I think, yeah, they had a kid. Did they have a kid with them? I can't even remember. No, they didn't have a kid with them, but I had my friend's kid. And we all ended up meeting up at the park. We were doing a little picnic, letting the kids play type vibe. Now, we were out there for a while. It was real hot. It was in the summertime. We ended up coming back to my house. I had bought pizzas and wings. And at that very moment, my ex noticed something about them. He couldn't put his finger on it. He just was like, you know, they're a little ratchet. And I'm just like, mm, they just, you know, maybe they was hungry because he was saying they were ratchet um, because basically they were asking for everything. Um, they just, you know, they won't shy about eating, honey. Stay tuned for part two. So some time went by after that, um, after she came to my house that one time um, and we would text here and there. Um, I know often, like even before she came to my house, she would ask me for like twenty dollars so her husband can get back and forth to work. Um she'll ask like for a ride. Um, and I will always be like, I ain't got it, I ain't got it, I ain't got it, because child, I ain't got it. And at that time I was already noticing a pattern about them because I'm like, okay, y'all job hop, y'all struggling a little bit. And you done told me your husband was on drugs. Something, something, something ain't right. So, like I said, we would talk on and off. We would always plan to meet up because they ended up moving down closer to me because they started, well, her husband started working at a resort. Well, this retreat type place down here. Um, he was a chef. So he was a chef there. And I guess she was helping out while she also worked at the Hilton. So even though they were right up the street from me, I was always busy. I ain't had time. Like you were already won't in my circle of people that I already hang out with or whatever the case may be. I ain't had time. So we just never linked. Fast forward to this March. I'm in my kitchen. Minding my business. I believe I was making a sandwich or something. And 
she texts me she will often text me hey mail are you busy and i hate when people say are you busy because it feel like you're gonna ask me for something so I, you know, I don't know why in my mind, I was like, why do I feel like she about to ask me, can she live with me? I don't know why I just felt that. I felt it down in my Shondo. I was like, I bet she, she asked me if she can live with me. I don't know what's going on, but okay. So I ended up telling her, you know, I'm about to head back to sleep or whatever the case may be. Um, because I work overnight, what's going on, what's wrong. And she's just like, you know, this is something I can't really, um, text about. Can I call you? You got a few moments. Stay tuned for part three of who the f I let live with me. All right. So we picking up the pieces from part two. So like I said, she texted me and was saying she wanted to talk on the phone. And I'm sitting there, like I said before, this lady probably going to ask to live with me. So we get on the phone and she's just like, yeah, girl, you know, things are just rough right now. Asking me how I've been and carrying on. So she cut to the chase um, and basically said, you know, yeah, you know, we're staying at the retreat, but they gave us seven days to get out. And I'm like, OK, wow. OK, um, y'all need anything? You know what? what's next so then she was like well that's why i called you i was wondering if i could rent one of your rooms because for me to be alone um prior to my new relationship i used to share this home with my ex and his child would stay here from time to time so i have an ample amount of space and like i told y'all she came to my house before so she was able to get wild and you know look around like okay this girl got space and in my mind, I'm like, okay, so what's your plan? Okay, y'all got seven days. What's your plan? She's like, you know, we only need about 30 days. We will pay you whatever. Uh, we'll do whatever you say. And I'm like, okay. I'm I'm just thinking to myself because I know it was a time where I had to file bankruptcy. I had just um, had an abortion. I was about to lose my car, about to be homeless and everything. And I ended up being roommates with my homegirl back in 2019. So it was kind of a like, what would Jesus do? You know, somebody helped you. Not technically helped me because I was paying rent. I had my own room and all that stuff. So I want the same situation technically because I could have went back to my daddy house, honestly. But it was still in my mind, like, you know, let me help her out. You know, she always seemed like a sweet, genuine person. Um, I'll be honest with you. Some of the things that were on my mind was just like, Lord, have mercy. Since I known this girl, she done worked at Wells Fargo. She done worked at um, Top Golf. She done worked at CarMax. Now she had working at Hilton. And her husband, he a chef, he done job top. He done lost his job now at the retreat because he was a, a chef at the retreat. And, you know, they about to get put out. Lord have mercy. I'm just all this going through my mind at one moment. So I say to her, you know what? Um, Y'all come over. Come sit down and talk to me. We can talk this thing going out. Stay tuned for part four. Uh, welcome to part four of who the f did I let live with me. So the day came where they came over to talk to me. Her husband comes. I show them the whole house. We I didn't take them upstairs. I didn't want anybody upstairs with me. But I let them venture through the living room, outdoors, um, the backyard, down in the basement, the area that they would soon live in, um, the bathroom and everything. So we sit down and, you know, I'm just talking to them like, okay, what is y'all plan? Um, and they're basically saying, you know, hey, we, we only, well, on the phone, she told me they would only need 30 days. But he was like, being realistic, because I asked them to be realistic with me. Don't shock me. Don't give me any surprises. I want y'all to be up front with me. So the husband was like, you know, being realistic, we going to need about 60 days. It was no shocking to me, honestly, y'all, because like 30 days, like some people can get on a good foot, but sir, you got to go find a new job. You about to be dependent on her income. You know what I mean? 
y'all y'all gonna be realistic okay i understood the 60 days i really didn't have no flat so they asked me how much would i charge them now y'all my rent it's in it's in the it's 1300 i'll just say it's 1300 for all this space i got in this historical house it's 1300 but i also didn't want them to be stuck in a situation where they're having to pay me all this money and that means they can't get out. So we agreed upon two fifty every two weeks because they only had her income. She was working at the Hilton. That girl wasn't making a whole lot of money, so I won't bother to bust them across the head. So we was all in agreements. I told them I would drop a contract because I didn't want no problems, and they were set to come move in. Um, at the time, I don't know if they. They had just bought a car from this older woman, they told me, but they had not got the tags. They still had this woman's tags on their car. We agreed upon having them move in as of April 4th. About two days before, she asked if she could go ahead and um, get the key so they can move in. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's fine with me. Because I work at night, you know, I will never see them. So I was fine with it. Stay tuned for part five. Now let's get into part five of who the f did I let live with me? So we go on to fast forward to April 4th. By this time they had moved in. It's like they moved in overnight. I never heard anything because again, I work overnight. Um, I recall one day, like it might have been like that Saturday because I'm off Fridays and Saturdays. You know, I hit her up like, you know, am I cool to come down in the basement? um to wash clothes because my washer and dryer was down there and i was trying to get them you know common courtesy or whatever the case may be because i didn't want to just barge in you know husband could be naked or whatever the case may be um because how my basement is set up you go down the stairs to your right it's a room that's like my hookah lounge when nobody is like down there trying to live <laughs> but i haven't set up like a second bedroom so in the process they did need to move some things around because I have a desk in there. I have a TV, TV stands. I have a sectional, um, and I had a table set. So it's set up just like a living room, a second living room. Um, so I let them know that they could move the tables. They moved the chairs around. I had cleared off my desk and I kind of pushed everything in my closet. I didn't have anything real valuable down there, but like games, I had some alcohol. I had my hookahs, but I pushed all that stuff in the closet just so they can have some space. And the reason why they wanted to move stuff around was because they was bringing their bed. So I wanted them to be comfortable. Um, I know some people probably would have thought that was odd. Like, you know, no, why are you bringing your bed? You're not staying here for long, but chill. Anyway, so when I finally went in the basement after they were moved in, I went downstairs and I had to like check myself because I hate when um, things are not like how I want them. And I'm like, okay, you can't, you know, they, they paying, you can't be too stressful to them. Um, what I saw when I walked downstairs was, you know, where my washer and dryer, which that's to the left, um, where the bathroom is. And it's like some extra area, another closet in the back door. She had laid out a, <laughs> a area rug and I got so cringe. I'm like, Oof. girl. Who told you with that area rug in my laundry room? So she ended up moving it because I told her that when it rains real bad, water rolls under the door because of poor, like how they have it built. Like it's, it's an old house, but I never, like my basement never has been flooded, but the water will roll in and you'll see it on the concrete. So I'm like, you know, hey, I don't want to be liable for your rug. You might want to move it. She was like, oh, I just was trying to set up some decor. You know, I peeped their bathroom. They had put their scale and, you know, I already had that bathroom set up like far as like basic things. I had cleaning products down there and it was like a shower curtain and stuff because um, at times, like if somebody extra came over, they might need to take a shower while I'm upstairs or just use the bathroom and refresh or whatever. So once I got past that little hump, I'm like, okay, look, Mel, it's not going to be for long. You know, they paid their, their first piece of rent. 
their 250 that following week. So I was cool with that. I had no problems with that. Y'all stay tuned for part six. A part six of who the f did I let live with me? I had to go ahead and get this video recorded before y'all was ready to fight me. But anyways, I want to back up a little bit. Right before they were about to move in, the husband was telling me how he had a job offer on a ship, American Airline, no, American Cruise Line, sorry. And he would be the head chef. He would have his own room, laptop, bathroom, all that good stuff. After they moved in, he said he was going to fly out for the job. Now, she was stating how she was going to apply to be a stewardess and their plans were going to be to move to North Carolina. So I'm like, oh, this is great. So y'all probably will only need 30 days. <laughs> so coming into April after they moved, I found out that he did not get the job offer after he flew out and do all, did all of that. So he still didn't have a job. She was still working at Hilton. Um, however, that whole time, like, I still have been wondering, like, how did he lose his job at the retreat? So she ended up coming to me, telling me, you know, girl, I got to show you these text messages. And I'm like, OK. Before she showed me the text messages, she was just letting me know how she was going around checking people at his old job because she used to help him. He was the chef at the retreat. She was helping him or whatever the case may be, because they would be large groups that would come visit the retreat. And there was two women, one black, one white. And she was saying how she was cool with um, one of the women. And it was a situation where she asked the husband to go with her somewhere. But her husband, the white woman's, I think it was the white woman's, her husband wasn't anywhere around. And her husband was at this lady house. So she had flack with the lady about that. So she checked her. Then the other woman, the black woman, she said that that woman would follow her husband around in the job like a puppy dog. And I'm just like, OK, girl, but you can't be walking around checking people, especially if that's his job. Like it's for you to check your man because he know what he is supposed to do that and not do that would respect your relationship. So she ends up showing me the text messages that she sent to both of those women where she berated these women, told them how their hair would dry need to fix their makeup, their outfit, just totally childish. Like, I would have never sent those text messages. And I did tell her, you know, like, I, this was a little far. I get how you feel. But, you know, at the end of the day, to me, it sounds like he got fired because you were the problem. Stay tuned for part seven. Part seven of who the f*** I let live with me. Now, I went ahead and drew up the contract. This is about a week or so in, and they were asking me, like, or th letting me know, like, whenever you're ready, go ahead and draw up, draw up the contract. And, of course, I work a lot. I work overnight, work 12 hours sometimes. So I was, like, a little lenient with it, but I also knew I needed to go ahead and get it done. So I found a contract online that I, you know, edit a little bit, but the contract stated that they would pay me 250 every two weeks. And that they were only here from April 6th up until June. I'm sorry, April 4th up until June 4th. And that no food was included. No, um, it wasn't a situation about, you know, with guests being able to come over. Because it ain't that type of party. Um, they didn't have to pay any, like, direct utility bills. They were just paying me that $250 every two weeks. They signed it. I signed it. I had a copy. They had a copy. Now, they went ahead and got their own groceries, as I expected them to do so, because this ain't, this ain't that. Um, but here's the thing, because I let them know you can use the kitchen, you can use my pots and pans. It started to become a situation where, like, I'm not a soda drinker, but if I have events, I might have sodas left over. Um, and with that, like, if I have alcohol, and again, if I have guests over, or even myself, I would use, like, the Pepsis for my alcohol beverages. And um, she one day asked me like, you know, hey, can uh, we have pep a Pepsi or whatever the case may be? And I'm like, yeah, I don't even drink them. So you good. But child, it was two, it was two cartons of Pepsi, child. The Pepsis was gone, which I won't mad about because I think the Pepsis have been down there since like December. But I'm just like, damn, okay. And it was a situation where they would cook, um, 
And at first, before I said something, they would just take the whole pan or pot and put it in the refrigerator without putting it in Tupperware. And of course, you know, I'm like, they don't know where the Tupperware is, so I'm gonna let them know. I'm like, you know, hey, it is Tupperware um, below here, and you can put your leftovers in there, whatever you're cooking. Here's why I got irritated. I work so much that sometimes during the week, I'm just eating fruit. So I'm not even cooking using my stove at all. So my kitchen should look like spick and span, like nobody lives here, you know? Um, it would be situations where like seasonings, grease, or whatever the case may be, would be across to my stove. And I would come in here in the morning and I would clean because it's getting hot outside, ants be coming. Um, I, I don't want no Mickey Mouse in my house running across my stove. Like I don't I don't want no rodents, ratchets, rats or roaches, none of that. I don't want none of that. You feel me? So I would clean and like I had got to the point where I had left out the cleaner bottle and the cleaner rag and she's just like, Oh, you know, if you need us to clean, um, just let us know. But to me it's like you're an adult. Why do I have to tell you to clean up like no, I'm not telling you anything. If you cook and you, you got seasonings across the, the counter, clean it up. And then it just got to the point where I noticed that different things were being used and they didn't ask. But at the same time, I don't even feel like you should have used it or asked. I feel like you should have got your own. Like my sugar. I had a half a bag of sugar and a brand new bag of sugar. The brand new bag of sugar was open before I could even open the damn sugar. My seasonings, I was noticing those was dwindling down. It's like, I'm not trying to be petty, but baby, that's not included. Like, you only paying two fifty every two weeks. You can't go get you no salt and pepper. Y'all stay tuned for part eight. So, this is part eight of who the f I let live with me. Now, as we're going into the month of May... Uh, we going out. I'm, a, I'm not going to drag y'all down in April. But as we're going into the month of May, um, I'm getting adjusted to them living here. They still have a season that's crossed my stove. Of course, soon they stopped cooking so much in the kitchen because he did end up getting a job. I don't know where he was working. He was working somewhere as a chef. And then she was waiting to get him on to work at the Hilton with her. But their, his background check was taking a long time for whatever reason. Now, I won't ever avoid them, but I was just always gone, especially in the month of May. I was doing stuff. Um, I was outside, but the few times that, um, like her husband would catch me, we'll have like short conversations. Um, he did have one conversation with me in the kitchen where he was just talking about, um, how he wants to be better in life. And mind you, this was a 49-year-old man, almost 50. So he's still trying to get on the good foot in life, okay? I understand things happen, but whatever. But he had tried to get me to indulge in a conversation where he basically um, was talking about a woman of his past and he couldn't understand why um, his significant other couldn't understand that he was like um, a man's girl. Like he flocks to women more than he flocks to men. And I just was like, hey, just sticking it all in the uh, in the bud. Look, if mama ain't happy, then the house ain't happy. Whatever your woman says, that that's what go. After that conversation, I kind of try to avoid having conversations with him. Um, we had one other conversation where he was just telling me how um, he had some type of situation where you can have an operation set up through Uber Eats or I don't know something. All I know is they was beautiful dreamers. Those folks had big dreams that they, that things that they wanted to do. So I just tried to keep the conversation short. And being that I work so much, I like to stay to, to myself aside from people in my immediate circle. And I even let her know that like, don't feel offended if I don't talk to you every day. Um, like she did try to say good morning to me here and there. Um, and I will respond because it's like, I told y'all in the beginning, we did not talk that much, but I was doing a favor because I did like her and I liked her spirit and I didn't want to see nobody outside. Now, as we're rolling around to June, June 4th was coming. I was a little excited because I'm like, you know, all right, they ready to be there, be there. So I thought. Now, like maybe a day or two before June 4th, or maybe, I want to say even like maybe a week before, she was like, you know, hey, we're still trying to apply to homes um, to rent and apartments are trying to look around the area. Do you think that we can get to 
June 30th. And I'm like, I knew that would happen. I knew that they want to stay longer. And at this point, I'm ready for y'all to go because my dryer sheets are getting used. My season is dwindling down. Every time I bring some up in the house, y'all ask me, can I have some? And it's just like, child, I can't have nothing to myself. You know, I, I can't have nothing to myself. But I I, I obliged. I said, you know, yes, yeah, y'all can get till June 30th. Um, just keep me posted on what you got going on. Because like I said, they were still looking for somewhere to live. Y'all stay tuned for part nine. This is part nine of who the f I let live with me. So we moving through the month of June. Like I said, I let them stay until June 30th. I'm just like, okay, these days about to fly on past. Now at this point, I didn't head it up to here because I had bought a bottle of syrup because I was going to make some uh, waffles or pancakes. And baby, one day I opened my cabinet. Mind you, I never used it. I never got to use the syrup. I opened my cabinet and it was about this much of the syrup gone. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm fine with that. I swear, later that week, I went into my cabinet. It was no more syrup left. So I'm, at this point, I'm upset. Now, one thing I did leave out, another thing that made me mad was back in the month of May, when I had went away for the weekend with my boyfriend, I had came back home, y'all, and it was a piece of salmon in my refrigerator with a dead fly on the plate where someone has scooped most of the salmon off the skin and just left a little piece there with some spinach and a dead fly in the microwave so i text her and i was like i threw that plate in the trash can i don't know whose it was but you know um and she was like oh i text my husband he left it in there i'm sorry i hope it didn't smell too bad so i had been had it up to the top of here before june but the syrup was my last straw so as i'm sitting here saying you know oh june 30th is coming soon she ended up texting me like she usually do and like hey can we talk you know we i ended up coming down to the kitchen she came up from the basement and she just telling me how her husband um lost his id um and that you know they're trying to apply to the place but she can't apply herself by herself because she needs his income they need both incomes so i'm telling her just apply and you know and mind you this is like a week before they're about, supposed to leave so in my mind i'm just like y'all ain't been looking for nowhere to go y'all ain't been looking for nowhere to go so at this point she's like can we get till july 1st mind you it that that's on, only a couple of days from june 30th but she was like his id will be coming in the mail so i'm like okay well, my sister's supposed to be moving in July 5th. So, y'all can't get nothing past July 5th, just to let you know. Mind you, that wasn't even the truth. Something did happen with my family, but I just was ready for them to go. I'm not giving you no more time. I'm just ready for y'all to go. I'm ready to have my house stay clean like it's supposed to. I ain't got no more help left in me. Y'all stay tuned for part 10, because that's where it's about to go down. Which y'all all been waiting on. Part 10 of who did I let live with me? Now, when she was asking to stay with me until July 1st, I also mentioned to her, like, you know, you have family in Georgia and you said they got money and all that stuff and y'all seem to love each other. Why don't you go back home? And I only suggested that because I felt like, you know, they were struggling up here. Like, sometimes you need your families to help and that's what family is for. I know that that is not the norm these days, but if you have that loving family, go back. She let me know that she was like loving it in Virginia so they didn't want to go back home. And in my mind, I'm just thinking like, okay, that's dumb. So we moved on from there, okay? Now, of course, of course they didn't leave July 1st. <laughs> now, I had saw his ID come in the mail through my informed mail um, thing I get on my email. And I told her that Wednesday that the, the ID was there. They didn't get that idea out the mail for about three days. And that's when I knew. I knew right then and there. These people, these people are not trying to apply to a house. And they're not trying to move or live. Some, like, I don't know what y'all doing at this point. So, she then proceeded to ask me, could they stay until the 4th? But this was through a text message. Because she mentioned how they decided now 
to go back to Georgia. And I'm like, about time y'all use y'all hair. Okay, cool. I'm fine with that. It's cool. Y'all gonna leave out on the fourth? I have no flack about it. I, I'm fine with that. Y'all leaving. Y'all getting out finally because ain't no more time after that. So I told them, you know, all right, I'm gonna cook for y'all um, on the third, the day before y'all leave. You know, just to send y'all off, you know, just being nice. They've been wanting to grill and they have some meats in my freezer that they've been wanting to use. And she offered to let me use the chicken and this um, chuck roast that they had. And I was going to get like hamburgers, hot dogs and everything else to cook with. Now, I went out that weekend to two concerts and that Sunday, which would have been what? I think that Sunday was like the first or the 30 whatever that sunday was going into the fourth that's when it was i started to feel sick but i thought that i had a sinus infection from being out in all that grass now the third approaches and my boyfriend and also my old co-worker urged me to like go get checked out because i'm just feeling worse and my head's hurting um I'm just, y'all, I have no energy, but I'm trying to fight through it. My nose stuffed up. I'm coughing. I'm just like, what the hell is this? So I find out that I have big C. So I instantly tell her, like, you know, hey, y'all, I'm not going to be able to cook for y'all, unfortunately. You know, save travels, all that good stuff. I'm going to go up in my room and just lay down because I ain't, I ain't feeling good. Y'all stay tuned for part 11. 11 of who the f did I let live with me? Now, the day before I found out that I had Big C, they had took out like around one o'clock in the afternoon um, this whole chicken that they were going to cook. Now, in my mind, I'm already thinking like, why would you take out meat at one o'clock and think it's going to be thawed out for you to cook for dinner? But whatever. I can't remember what I did that night, but first, I don't think I was here. I might have went out to do my part time. But whatever the case may be, I, they put that chicken in the crock pot. I went to bed. I didn't know what they did down here. I was, I went to bed. Now that morning before I went to the doctor, I went down in the kitchen and I noticed that they had cooked rice, but they had dripped rice juice across my counter after I had bleached and cleaned my kitchen down and also dripped the rice juice over my trash can and put the whole pot with the rice in my refrigerator instead of putting it in Tupperware. The chicken, it looked like they tried to cut into it because they put it in the crock pot and it won't to their liking. So these people went out and got them some pizzas and whatever they didn't eat of the pieces, they put it in the stove. So I'm already pissed. I'm just like, what is wrong with y'all? Like y'all, y'all acting like some switches right now. Like why you see my kitchen is clean bleach down and you just come up in here and start destruction and i don't know why y'all i always felt like it was her husband i never felt like it was really her i always felt like everything was on her husband now when i told her that i had big c after i came back to, from the doctor i still hadn't said anything about my kitchen at this time because i'm sick i don't feel like it she's like oh can i come up and give you a hug how you feeling and i'm like i don't want to give you what I got, why would you want to come up here and give me a hug, lady? So she ends up texting me and telling me like, you know, hey, we're going to go ahead and leave tonight instead of tomorrow. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, they already got the U-Haul. They getting ready to move their stuff out. Because at this time, I never knew what they had down in that room. I never, ever went down in that room just re to respect their privacy overall. So I'm like, okay, cool. Once y'all done, make sure y'all leave the keys by the turtle tank and also set up your mail forwarding so I'm not getting your mail. Clear instructions. And I went to sleep. Now I woke up maybe about four or five and she was calling me and she's like, hey, can you come to the door? And I'm like, you know, I'm still naked. I don't have any clothes on. Um, and she just goes instantly into how do I feel and all this stuff. And she's like, well, we locked ourselves out. And I'm thinking to myself, locked yourselves out? Like, why y'all don't have a key? Like, I'm sure y'all ain't moved y'all stuff out already. So at this time, 
I'm not about to jump up and get up. I'm, I don't feel good. I'll come open the door in a moment. So I'm still rolling around in the bed. She calls back again and said, hey, we're in a Uber. Um, can you unlock the door? So I go ahead and put my clothes on. I'm like, I'm mad about the situation. Y'all stay tuned for part 12. I've been waiting for this. This is part 12 of who the f did I let live with me? So we know in part 11, I told y'all she called me. She told me that they locked themselves out of the house, okay? I was in confusion. I was trying to figure out how you lock yourself out if you still got your stuff in the house. So I put my clothes on after she called me the second time to tell me that they're in an Uber and if I could kind of move it along a little bit quicker. So I'm like, all right. So I go downstairs, I open the door up. I never look her in her face, y'all. I don't know what it is, but I never, I had not laid eyes on that lady since the weekend. So I saw her, looked her directly in her face during the weekend, but that day, I didn't look her in her eyes. I opened the door and I turned around and I came in my kitchen. I came in my kitchen and I saw that they still had that whole chicken in the crock pot and they still had that rice in my refrigerator in the um, pot and they still had them pizzas in my oven. So I'm standing in the middle of the floor and now I'm pissed. I'm like, uh, so are y'all gonna get this food before y'all leave? And she's like, yeah, we're coming back. And I'm like, okay. I still never see her, y'all. I go back up the stairs while she's going in the basement. So while I'm going up the stairs, she was like, yeah, we're meeting my cousin halfway because you all wants a credit card. Mind y'all, they're going to leave from Virginia and move back to Georgia. And she's saying, she's saying that U-Haul requires a credit card, which I don't know to be true or false because I have used U-Haul before. And to my recollection, I have used a debit card. But anyway, she's just like, yeah, I just want to let you know what's going on. We're meeting them halfway um, so they can get the U-Haul for us. So I'm like, okay. I never looked her in her face. I just went back in my room. She left out of the door. I ran my camera back from my front door yesterday. And it was 8.30 p.m. July 3rd. That was the last time that I heard from them. Stay tuned for part 13. What's up, y'all? Part 13. Who the I let live with me? All right. So, y'all, I'm dressed. They left. I went out the house to get myself some food. Okay? I came back in the house. By 12 o'clock, because she had left the door open, so I'm, you know, the keys are by my turtle tank. They don't have keys to get back in my house. So, I just come... You know, I just locked the door. I text her and I said, hey, I'm leaving the keys under the mat because I'm not I'm not going to sleep. My door is open, basically. You know, I'm thinking they're coming back because I'm I know that they still got stuff here. They still got the chicken and the crock pot sitting out in my kitchen. So, y'all, I go to sleep and I wake up the next morning. I never got a text back from her. Mind y'all, this whole time, her phone was never physically on. She only was working off the Wi-Fi. I think her husband was the only one that had the working phone. So I thought it was blue. So I noticed she was somewhere with Wi-Fi and I noticed she got this text message, okay? So 10.30 that morning, which is now the 4th of July, I sent her this long text message. That was green. And I pretty much was saying how it was inconsiderate of them to not keep me in the loop because I done left my key outside thinking that they're coming back with the U-Haul to get their stuff. They left my kitchen a mess. I just would appreciate if they would let me know what's going on. So at this time, I'm like, all right, let me just go downstairs and see what they all got still in the basement because I never, since April, I had not been in that room. So y'all, I go downstairs. I think the, the back door, the door leading, coming into the basement, like you can go downstairs and get into the basement. It was unlocked, so I locked it. And when I walked in the room, y'all, their bed was still there. No pillowcases on the pillows. Bed was still made up, area rug on the floor. Racks in the closet, but no clothes. 
I had gave her three brand new pairs of, it was a pair, it was like two pair of heels. One, I think they both came from Fashion Nova, something like that. And then it was another pair um, of boots that I got from this website that I could not fit. And she was so appreciative of them, but she left those. But they took all their other shoes and clothes. They had, it, it looked a mess in the basement. It didn't, I didn't really get the details because I just can't, I just was like, wow, y'all, y'all left all y'all stuff down here. And of course my couches and stuff is still down there. So I locked the door. I cut the light off. I let that go on. It's the 4th of July. I got the grill. I ain't got time for this mess. Stay tuned for pot 15. This is pot 14 of who the fuck I let live with me. Now, it's still the 4th of July. Like I told y'all, I won't stand down in the basement and figure and that now I wanted to cook my food. I wanted to move on with my life. Now, I did send one more text message to her husband like, hey, what y'all doing? I need to know something. Tell me something. So, y'all, I still didn't hear back from them by that night. I had left out that night to go do something. I don't remember what I did, but I noticed that their car was still parked on the corner. So I'm like, okay, this is weird. Y'all done left y'all bed and y'all left y'all car. What in the Bonnie and Clyde is going on? So now we're going into the 5th of July. I sent her one last text message to let her know if I do not get a response by the end of the day, I now know that you have abandoned your items. So I didn't even get them to the end of the day before I went downstairs just to see all of what I would need to do to my room down there if they didn't come back and get their stuff. So I went in the basement to see what's all going on. And y'all, I noticed they had a mini refrigerator right by my desk. And I was curious to find out what was inside. Yes, that's what I saw when I opened that refrigerator. I pushed back the couches. He has some Lego pieces and just trash up under my couch, orange pill in the couch. She left hair products, her journal, books. They had pictures hung up on the wall. They had a dirty air, um, area rug up under the bed. Fago soda bottle in the corner up under this little desk table thing they had. A dirty curry that looked like Spider's been having fun with it. I immediately was in shambles just from that refrigerator alone. I couldn't believe that I sat here and invited somebody into my home. And this is what they do to me. Stay tuned for part 15. I just got off work and I'm going to go ahead and get part 15 out of the way of who the f I let live with me. So once I did all my boohooing, crying and calling and talking to friends and showing them pictures of the whole situation, I put the husband and the wife in a group chat on my other phone because obviously y'all not answering this phone. So I'm going to text you from my other phone that you don't have the number to. And I sent them the pictures and I was like, you know what? Y'all trifling and the Lord is going to handle y'all. And for those of y'all that asked what was in that refrigerator, honey, that was nets and maggots. Yeah real dirty so the following day on the 6th i mustered up enough strength from having big c and i put all that stuff outside when i tell you the people came and they took all that stuff i i'm talking about when you live in a city you can put stuff on the streets and people gonna come get it they are gonna come get it the pictures the table everything was gone except for a few books and like these two signs that they had like it said cook and eat or something like that. And I just threw them in a the dumpster over here. The mini refrigerator, I told it that outside to get that mess up out of my house. The bed, I had arranged for somebody to come get it. They came and got the mattress, the um, because the mattress was good. The um, what do you call it? The the mattress and other um 
Lord, y'all, why I can't think of the name of it? The mattress and the um box spring. Ha! <laughs> um, I rolled that little dirty rug area rug they had up the area rug that she had put in my laundry room i uh put that outside and i my next door neighbor got down saw that on her porch so i guess she was gonna clean it it wasn't as dirty as the one they had up under their bed all the little miscellaneous stuff they had i just threw that in the trash okay honey basuda threw it in the trash i still gotta go down to my basement and deep clean i've been working i'm working a month straight with no days off so it's like I can't right now, but I do plan on doing so like bit by bit when I get off work some of these days. But honey, I haven't heard from them at all. I blocked her on TikTok and on Instagram. We were never Facebook friends. Um, in the car, it mysteriously disappeared just like last week. Mind you, the car had been here since the 3rd of July and it just disappeared last week. Like, cause I was going to go to DMV and do a abandoned, um, title. Yeah, I was. And just like that, I wiped my hands with those people. Like, I know that karma is a bad, whether they're still somewhere hiding in the city, whether they're back in Atlanta, karma is a bad, you don't do people to help you when you're on your lowest. You know what I mean? Now, here are some of my theories. I know she told me that the husband was on drugs before. Maybe he influenced her and she got on drugs. And that's why she started acting all crazy. Or he just told her, come on, let's go. Or they could be running from somebody. Like, I've never seen nobody just leave all their stuff and just beat it. Like, excuse me? And you ain't set up mail for it and all your overdue bills and stuff is still getting sent to my house. So, um, yeah. But y'all, that, that concludes... Who the f did I let live with me?